This mod is receiving a massive update and this time is focusing on Persia. I was lucky enough to get my hands on early access and I'm going to share it with you guys so you can understand my hype. Antebellum 1.8 will be introducing a new twist on the Persia region and its associated tech group, Iranian, with multiple different paths to forming the Persian tag as well as playing as them. There is three unique paths depending on the faith that you choose, each with its own unique mission trees, national ideas, government reforms, flags, and even colors. Persia will also have special units available to them, the Immortals. The lore is very deep on this one, so feel free to join the Antebellum Discord linked in the description so that you don't miss out on the spicy teasers that Parm is releasing as the update is closer to release. While you're down there, feel free to check out my Patreon for early access to these videos and consider subscribing to the channel. We're pushing for 20,000 subs by the new year. Back in Antebellum, this time with a little bit of a twist. The incredible looking 1.8 update Early access given to yours truly by the wonderful Parmalion. Focused on the Persia region, we are going to specifically be paying attention to the uh, Sassanids and these uh, Sharpurids people over here. Uh, hopefully we're going to see a Persia pop out of all of this madness. Apparently all Persian tags share the same mission tree. So these guys are going to be able to work their way through this massive, massive mission tree with branching missions and all that stuff and eventually form Persia and uh, be big and strong. And these little guys here, my son, I am actually going to have the honor of being able to make a unique mission tree for the Nestorians in the Persian Gulf. So it should be a lot of fun. Stay tuned for that one. Either way, I'm sure you guys know the drill by now. We're going to go ahead and speed five and unpause. The AI over here in the Sasanids is working through their mission tree. And it looks like once they get a couple of extra things here, they're going to get some serious bonuses. They're going to probably get them some claims, I imagine. Uh, and that is going to allow them to, uh, you know, unite Persia. It's also worth mentioning the absolute religious strife that's going on in this area. Zoroastrian is the majority, but there is definitely some Nestorian Christians, some Shias, some Sunnis. There's even some Abadis across the Straits there. So uh, clearly we're going to see some interesting stuff. We also have this Zunist over here, which I have actually never heard of. I think this might have yet be an unannounced thing. So, uh, you know, if it is, don't be mad at me, Parm. But either way, we got a new religion here. And with this Princes of Persia mission right here, uh, they are going to get claims on the entirety of Persia and Khorasan that are owned by their rivals. Uh, they are actually rivaled to quite a few people in the area, so specifically this uh, Shapurids. So it looks like the Sasanids may be going after them pretty quickly, but uh, they're they're beefy. They're they're pretty comparable in terms of numbers and whatnot right now. And it looks like the Shapurids got themselves into a bit of a predicament here. They attacked these uh, Serenus people for uh, Iranian hegemony, apparently, but uh, looks like they weren't doing too good. I think they hired some mercs or something because they were low on the numbers. But um, yeah, then it looks like the Sasanids sensed blood in the water and attacked. So uh, yeah, I don't know. It looks like we might be seeing a big clash between the, the local, the regional powers, so to speak. And it looks like Merv wanted to get in on the action as well. Attacked by yet another nation. The Shapurids, man, they're going down. They're going down. And all of this chaos going on in Iran can only be a net positive for our protagonist of this video here. The Sasanids are definitely going to come out on top, at least on top of the Shapurids. So will they be able to unite Persia? Only time will tell. Also, can I get an F in the chat for Jerusalem? It looks like the Nizarids came to uh, collect their dues. And uh, as if it couldn't get any worse, getting pushed entirely out of the north of their lands, the uh, Shapurids here are actually getting attacked by the Belushistanis. Uh, <laughs> it's game over. They're done. And meanwhile, the Sassanids are uh, looking to get a little bit of their land consolidated over here. It looks like they got some free cores. Uh, I don't know what from, but they've got cores now. And it looks like if the Sassanids are going to be forming Persia, they're going to need a few more provinces in the Persia region, which is uh, mostly owned by this Jalayarids as well as this Injuid. So uh, I assume that since they've got claims and cores and whatnot, they're going to push for it. Uh, the AI tends to be aggressive towards the getting their cores and whatnot. So only time will tell. Also, it appears that they went religious ideas for their first idea group. I think that's always a uh, good choice, actually, considering the fact that they're Zoroastrian and basically everyone else in the world is uh, going to be a heathen. So <laughs> that's a good CB and a good conversion strength. So probably a good call on their end. OK, so I actually noticed that they were taking more land than I expected them to in these wars. And then I realized it's because they actually have cores on these provinces, not just claims. They have cores. 
they have cores on every single province in this area. So yeah, they can take a lot of land. I think this is, ah, uh, yeah, that explains it. That definitely explains it. Okay. Okay. This makes a lot more sense then. Also, what the heck? They're not going to be able to attack these guys because they're allied to the Nizrids. Oh, <laughs> classic. Oh, that's so classic. Oh, these poor guys. Ah, uh, well, we'll see if they can manage it. Meanwhile, in Europe, it looks like Andalusia is pushed all the way up to the northern coasts of Iberia. Francia is uh, holding it together by the looks of it, but it does appear that Sicily is pushing on the Papal States. The Shias marching on Rome. Up in the north, it appears that the Pagans in Valletti have done quite a bit of conquest, and we might see a Wendia this time around. And despite having some rebellions, it looks like the Golden Horde managed to uh, bring them to heel. And uh, their ally of Comania in the south is doing all right. And uh, terrifyingly, it looks like the Nizrids are up all the way into Anatolia. Uh, it happens. It happens. They're strong. They're very strong. Well, let's see if anybody can, uh, you know, contest. Also, peep the little unit model for the uh, Lighthouse of Alexandria. Huh? That's pretty good. Now, I think Parm told me that Yuan will actually only go in Historian 10% of the time, and I'm fairly certain that they went in Historian in the last Antebellum video we did. So, uh, what are the chances that they do it two times in a row? <laughs> and I don't think I mentioned it, but uh, I did leave the natives this time around, especially after the reverse trade video. I realized maybe it was a mistake. Ah, okay, so here we go. I saw that the Sasanids had attacked the Injuids, and I was like, wait a minute, aren't they allied to the Nizrids? And then I realized that the Nizrids are embroiled in a war of their own. <laughs> Might be why they uh, were willing to dishonor a call to arms. Andalusia and England. Um, best of luck to you, lads. And there it is, Persia, with the most beautiful map color I think I could have possibly imagined for it. Zoroastrian Persia formed by the Sassanid Empire. That, oh, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. And meanwhile, Persia is vibing over there. And uh, take a look at this. We have Venetian Balkans and Nicaea. Uh, notably, Bulgaria is very tiny and uh, Constantinople is no longer under control of the Byzantines. The Byzantines are gone. We also have the holy city of Rumie owned by uh, the uh, Sicilian Emirate. And that border of Franken and Andalusia, man, it is making me nervous. It is a powder keg ready to blow, I can tell. Meanwhile, it looks like England and Scotland have gotten a bit of expansion, and it looks like Ireland is being consolidated as well. And the poor Yuan, yeah, it was only a matter of time once they went in Historian, though sometimes they can thrive, but this time, not so much. So Song is actually the emperor of China. They have negative mandate growth, but uh, it might go up if they can consolidate a bit of the lands because I believe they have cores on all of China now. Just claims, okay. Yeah, I don't know, we'll see. And in 1516, we definitely have some border changes to be looking at. The Nizarids seemingly have crumbled with Lebanon popping out and the Seljuks taking up a bunch of their land in the north. Nicaea and Sicily have taken over the majority of the Balkans as well as obviously Italy, though Sicily has migrated into the Maghreb. And do you guys remember when I said that Andalusia and Francia were gonna end up fighting each other? Well, it looks like they did. I think I know who won. <laughs> Moravia has pushed the Magyars back to their capital, and it would appear that England has taken over all of the British Isles, minus a couple of islands, and uh, also made their way into Scandinavia, apparently. India is vanilla, so you can expect a big beefy Bengal, as per usual. And Song, doing okay, looks like they're snaking around China a bit, maybe gonna get that mandate buffed up a tiny bit. Persia has been working their way through a few of their missions, though uh, they've got quite a few more to go if they want to make any meaningful progress. And it appears that they decided to go defensive ideas with their second group. I should have shown you this before, but the Persian traditions give domestic trade power and advisor costs, and when they finish it out, they will get a merchant. They also get leaders without upkeep and general cost, goods produced, land force limit, Build time and dev cost, discipline, and immortals drill gain modifier. I assume the immortals is a special unit type. Admin efficiency and tolerance of the true faith. Very well rounded, honestly, and I think that this is all around a very strong tag. Though I do have to say, seeing this Nizarids getting beat up like this, it does put a smile on my face. In the year 1600, we have Lotharingia and Persia locked in the number one and two spots, though uh, Persia is actually higher. It's just an issue of institution. Very shortly behind them, though, we have Andalusia again with institution and Zhu as well. But then Nicaea, Balmanis, Bohemia, and then, uh, yeah, people who ask me, why do you delete the natives? Why do you delete the natives? 
because we have a number eight great power in North America, a native federation. I'm to the point in my career where I get comments saying that I should or shouldn't do stuff. And honestly, I think most of the time I have to do the opposite because it's almost always wrong. <laughs> Look at this. This is, this is game ruining. This is totally game ruining. This is unrealistic, 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 unrealistic. I am deleting the natives forever for the rest of my videos and there's nothing you guys can do to stop me. But aside from all of the native shenanigans, we do have Lotharingia in Brazil as well as La Plata. And it looks like they're making their way over into Brazil. We actually have some Hanseatic boys over here in Colombia. And Andalusia is over here in the Caribbean, having the entirety of it under their control. Lotharingia is trying to get a couple of colonies set up here on the east coast of the US. But uh, yeah, these natives are making it very hard for them. We have a Russia that has formed by a Novgorod, I believe. A Bohemia that has crusaded to the north and taken over much of the land in northern Germany, Pomerania, Prussia, and even southern Scandinavia. Francia is a one province minor here in uh, whatever this province is. Smushed in between a massive Andalusia and Lotharingia, who's actually crossed the channel into the British Isles. That's a nice looking green that you can see here. Uh, it's definitely not the Nizrids. In fact, it is a successor state to the Nizrids. Some of you guys may have heard of this name before. But of course, they're going to be outshined by the Seljuks to their north and um, Persia. Yeah, having a good game. India is consolidated into Delhi, Gujarat, but mostly Bamanis and Bengal and uh, China with Zhu over there in charge of the majority of it. But this uh, Koshud over here in the west is doing pretty good in their own regards. Down in the south is an absolute mess, but uh, Ayutthaya has a very solid power base down in Southeast Asia. So we'll see what they can do with that. Japan very much still disunited. Uh, doesn't look like anything is going to be happening with them anytime soon. And as far as the Reformation goes, it definitely happened. And it uh, looks like the Protestants pushed the uh, Romuvans as well as the Slavs entirely out and they are gone. There is one Norse province left in the world and it is over here on the land of the goats in Goatland. Not to be confused with the land of the goats over here in Wales. But yes, Protestant is extremely strong and they are having a very good go at it. Uh, the League War hasn't kicked off just yet, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Looks like it's actually pretty even, but uh, you do have to consider that Lotharingia is the number one great power. So, yeah, they've got that going for them. The Golden Horde has formed Tataria, which is pretty cool. They are a vassal of the Grey Horde over here to their east. And Lotharingia is down here in the Cape of Good Hope. So uh, definitely some colonization going on. Not necessarily a whole lot, but uh, yeah, a little bit. And with 80 years left in the game, Iroquois is the number four great power of the entire world, only solidifying every single thing that I've ever said about why I delete the natives. Borders in Europe have ebbed and flowed a wee bit over time, but uh, for the most part, they've been pretty steady with Lotharingia and Andalusia sharing a decent border. But how about that Andalusian France? Bohemia seemingly had a fall from grace with a bunch of tags released from them and uh, Bavaria eating up all of Czechia. Of course, I have to point out when we have a beautiful Italy form and uh, how about Mantua becoming Venice, only not controlling Venice. That's Italy, Italy controls Venice. The Seljuks taking over the entirety of Greece as well as a very large majority of Egypt and the Levant all the way down into Mesopotamia. And with Persia working their way into Egypt as well, as well as the Horn of Africa, Central Asia, all the way up to the Urals. And uh, they're also making their way into Central Africa, into the Sahel. For some reason, Persia decided they want to land all the way over into Guinea. Of course, they're blocked in the north by the big old Russian bear. And speaking of bears, how about this Zhu? They ended up taking over the entirety of China, but not the empire of China because the empire of China no longer exists. That would explain why they're so stable, right? One empire that definitely still exists next to Gujarat and Delhi is a big old juicy Bengal. But when you take a look over here, you see a formable from vanilla, New Centara, which is a Malaya formable localization name thing. Very cool though. Very, very cool. But you know, I got a root for the boner boys down here. Always happy to see them thriving. We have Australia colonized by Lotharingia and New Zealand colonized by natives. We have Falkland in the south with Lotharingi in Brazil, Peru, La Plata, and Colombia in the north. Hanseatic Colombia on the top of South America. The Caribbean looking exactly the same as before with Al Andalus in charge of that area. But it also looks like we've got an Andalusian colony in Mexico as well as a Lotharingian colony in Mexico. We also have an Andalusian colony over here in Louisiana as well as the east coast. But it uh, looks like New Flanders is the big guy over here. 
Well, the big guy next to the big guy. Iroquois, the big dog over here, doing literally whatever they want the whole game because natives are broken. And in 1.34, they quote-unquote fix them. But uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to continue to get rid of them. We have some English colonies over here in California, as well as Newfoundland and New Northumberland in Alaska, which is pretty cool. I'm a big fan of these localized names. I think they add a lot of flavor to the game. Now, normally when I unpause and it's 1800 plus, that's because we're calling it the video, but uh, we actually have a new age here, the age of industrialization. Anybody who has played Antebellum or watched my previous episode will know this one actually goes to 1900 and I'm going to let it run to 1900. So hopefully you guys appreciate that. I'll take a little bit of extra time to give you guys a little bit of extra content. So if the video's a little long, you know, for better or for worse. Either way, we have some new objectives here and uh, they all look pretty interesting and we're gonna see some decent changes around the world since the last time we looked 100 years ago. For example, the revolution of Lotharingia has been crushed and it looks like they're actually getting crushed. They've lost land to Andalusia and it looks like they're currently losing a war to Bavaria. And right next to them, Italy is beating up Andalusia in a war? Eh, we'll take a look on that. China continues to be absolutely massive, this Zhu nation. <laughs> Definitely picked up the pieces of uh, the shattered Chinese empire. Nusantara thriving, Bengal thriving, Gujarat doing okay considering the fact that they have a massive Bengal next to them. We have the British over here in Africa with Jolof and Jene cutting off Persia. Mm, interesting to see what happened to Persia. They have thoroughly been shellacked. Looks like their former allies of the Seljuks are no longer an ally anymore. They're getting encroached on by the Seljuks, the Ruskies, the Delians. And they've even lost some land to some African natives as well. This Moravi nation is doing quite well pushing back the Persians, but they've also taken over a bunch of land down in Zanzibar and the Madagascar. And currently the British pushing back the Lotharingians here in Southern Africa. Yeah, it looks like when Lotharingia lost the revolution, they also lost a bunch of their colonial nations, Peru and Brazil, both independent. We also have a Mexico, uh, but uh, not doing too good, all things considered. But uh, doing good, I guess would be an understatement for Iroquois. The North American native. I don't know how many times I got to say it, but natives are overpowered. The religious map mode of Europe is mostly Catholic with some Anglican and Protestants up in the north. And of course, Orthodox over here from the Ruskies. Africa is for the most part very Sunni with uh, feet sniffers in the bottom. And of course, Catholics and Anglicans in the south. It appears that the Buddhists have been pushed out of Southeast Asia for the most part by the Sunnis. Australia is mostly Catholic with some of this El Chiringa. And we have animists that live on NZ. And because you guys like it when I read off the great powers, I didn't even realize this, but the number one great power in the world is actually Iroquois. And I want it to be known. I promise you on my life, I did not do anything to the Iroquois to make them thrive like this. That is 100% natural. Andalusia is in the second place with Zhu in the third, Bengal in the fourth, Russia in the fifth, Seljuks, Bavaria, then Italy, rounding out the top eight, all with over 2,000 development and an economic hegemon declared for Andalusia. I'm really curious to see how the next 100 years will turn out. And in 1900, just 14 years before the Great War happened historically, we've got some big old blobs and uh, a lot of them are green. Now, the number one great power, not who I was expecting it to be, but it ended up being Iroquois with um, Bavaria following them by 1,000 development, and below them, 1,000 more development is Russia. Andalusia and the Seljuks neck and neck for fourth place. Zhu down in sixth with Bengal in seventh. No surprise there, it's a Chubert vid, but we did see a Brazil make a comeback in the new world and come up to the eighth spot in 2,500 development. Economic hegemon is actually Bavaria of all places, and Andalusia with the naval hegemony that is interesting. I kind of want to be mad about this. I kind of do, but I just can't. I can't force myself to be mad about it. I always delete the natives and it's because of stupid stuff like this. Like this happens. This is vanilla. This happens all the time. And uh, yeah, that's why I get rid of the natives. But it seems like this time we didn't do it. And uh, I think it added a little bit of comedic relief. All of this land down here is Iroquois. They own the land of the Caribbean. They also own a ton of land in Mexico and all the way up into Alaska. South America is Brazil, like we had talked about before, but Peru, with beautiful name placement, is there with Colombia, uh, subject of Andalusia, up there in the north. Africa remained almost entirely untamed. Uh, the British were actually kicked out of South Africa by this massive Moravi. Uh, don't really know that nation, but uh, they, they had a good run this time. They ended up competing with the Seljuks up there in the north as well. 
Okay, I was a little bit wrong. These provinces in the middle are actually colonizable. So Andalusia colonized a bit of the central parts of Africa. So yeah, they, I lied. They also managed a large chunk of the land up here in North Africa, Iberia, and all the way up into Flanders. Turns out that Flanders is actually Andalusia. And without a doubt, the funniest thing I've seen in this run is Italian Britain with Lotharingia with their capital in England. Meanwhile, we have Bavaria over here, apparently the leaders of the German world, teaching everybody how to follow rules like a good little boy and girl and uh, be super, super efficient as they do it. Somehow, someway, Venice made a comeback over here, surrounded by Italy and Bavaria. I don't know how they managed it, but uh, they did. We have Italy, Seljuks, and Andalusia, all three in the same general vicinity in Italy. <laughs> and as far as the Seljuks, man, it's all them. They, uh, they had beautiful borders, probably followed their mission tree basically to a T, and uh, yeah, they ended up gobbling up Persia, which is sad because that was what this video was all about, but you know, it is what it is. We also have a massive Zhu, which we have had actually for hundreds of years, and to be fair, their borders don't look like they've changed a whole lot. It appears that Delhi sensed the blood in the water from Persia and ate up a bunch of their lands, and Mother Russia all the way in northern Germany and Scandinavia to the very edges of Siberia and Kachamka, or whatever this area is called, Truly legendary. We also had a Japan unite. It took them a very, very long time, but they did unite. And Sambas and Nusantara managed to maintain their independence down here, despite the fact that Bengal was breathing down their necks for hundreds of years. We also have a one province minor over here of Palembang, which is very funny. And we have an independent Australia. The religious map mode is mostly Catholic over here in Europe, but obviously Andalusia is Sunni, so they won't convert it because of the Dimi, but... Um, it is mostly just Catholics. The Shias have almost exclusively been pushed out of here. Uh, if you guys don't know, Sicily is Shia in 1444. So, yep, they've been pushed out. Obviously, the Seljuks didn't convert much because they are also Muslim, and Muslims don't really convert much because of the Dimi. We do still have a Zoroastrian and Nestorian presence in uh, this area, but, you know, sadly, it's not as big as it once was. I was really hoping for a big, strong, powerful Zoroastrian Persia. Catholic down here with fetishist up here. And again, the rest is all Sunni for the most part. South America is very, very Catholic with uh, some Sunnis up here. But again, they're not going to convert because there's Muslims. They also won't really convert because they're colonial nations and they don't really convert a whole lot in the first place. But one nation who did do a lot of conversions is, of course, the Totemists of Iroquois, uh, teaching everybody how to worship totem poles and uh, kicking everybody who doesn't out of their nation, apparently. The culture map mode actually doesn't look too different from what I would expect it to. There's a couple of things up here in the north, um, like some this Frisian province looks like it was converted to Westphalian. I definitely believe that Hungarian came over here and uh, pushed into the Romanian lands just a bit. Albanian is actually in the Byzantine culture group this time around, which is very funny. Shout out my Albanian Byzantine boys. We have some Burgundians down here in the south from the Lotharingians, and some Burgundian over here as well in Australia. New Zealand is Maori, of course. Very, very cool flag. I love this flag. South America, definitely a bit of a mixed bag. We've got English, Burgundian, as well as Germanic, all the way up in the north. In North America, again, though a lot of English and American, and uh, the rest is, for the most part, various different native cultures. With a tiny bit of Iberian in Mexico, Florida, and the Caribbean. If you love modded EU4, make sure that you subscribe and ding the bell. That way you get notified when we upload new videos like this in the future. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like on it in the first place because I appreciate that a ton. If you haven't already, join my Discord, my subreddit, my Twitter. Those things are all linked in the description below. Plenty of fun ways to get involved with the community if you would like to. And if you want early access to this video, like my patrons who saw this weeks ago, you can check out my Patreon where as little as $5 a month, you will get early access to every single video that comes out on this channel. You guys support me and I give you back something in return. If you have something that you would like to see, make sure you leave it in the comments down below the video. I hope that you are all doing wonderful. I hope that you are thriving and I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day. Till next time, stay chill.